Okay. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different types of factorizing, a few examples. I'm going to start with the sum of product type of factorizing, and then I'm going to go into factorizing perfect squares, which if you can see a bit of a pattern, uh, there's a bit of a shortcut. Otherwise, you can just use this process over as well. With sum of product type factorizing, you'll notice that the, the original expression you, you'll have will have three terms. Uh, and let's put it in the form of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, when we factorize these expressions, you need to find, well, we're looking for two numbers that add to give the value of b and multiply to give the value of c. And it takes a little bit of practice. The best way to probably go about it is, you know, break down that value of c and work out what two factors are of c. And, you know, if you add them together, do they equal the value of b? Okay, so I'm going to go through uh, a few examples. So hopefully you get the hang of it and then you can have a go at some questions yourself. So, okay, first expression we have x squared plus 7x plus 12. First thing to do is to set up two sets of brackets. Because we're going to go from an expression without brackets to an expression with brackets. That's what factorizing is all about. As I said, it's probably easier to look at this value of c, okay, that constant term at the end of the ex uh, expression, uh, and work out what are two numbers that multiply to give me 12. But those numbers also have to add to give me 7. So we know that uh, you know 12 times 1 gives me 12, but 12 plus 1 is 13. So they're not the two values I'm looking at. 6 times 2 is also 12, but Again, 6 plus 2 is 8. So I want my two numbers to add to 7. Another two factors of 12 is 3 times 4. And you notice that 3 plus 4 also equals 7. So they're the two values I'm looking for. So once I've worked out what those two numbers are, that add to give you the value of B, and also multiply to give you the value of C, they're the numbers that go in the, the back of your brackets. And it doesn't matter uh, which order. So I can go 4 here, and a 3 there. And you can go either way. All right. Notice that uh, both of these numbers are going to be positive numbers. So a plus in the middle of each set of brackets because it's positive 4 times positive 3 is positive 12. Um, and positive 4 plus positive 3 is positive 7. The front of those brackets just goes the x term. And it's really as simple as that. Um, so if we jump over to this second example again, set up your two brackets. What are two factors? Multiply to give us 15. Okay, 15 and 1. Okay, that's great, but 15 plus 1 is 16. We need those two numbers to add to 8. Uh, so another two factors of 15 could be 5 and 3. And 5 and 3 also add to give me 8. So they're the two numbers we're going to go with. So let's go 3 here, 5 here. Again, these are both positives. And X goes at the front. Okay, I think you're starting to get the idea. This is a little bit trickier because now we're actually finding uh, a number that multiplies to 5 uh, and adds to give us a larger value uh, which is 6. So what are those two numbers that multiply to give me 5 but add to give me 6? Again, set up your brackets. X can go at the front if you want to do it that way. Two numbers that multiply to give me 5. Well the only factors of 5 is 1 and 5. So 1 plus 5, also 6. That's it. Again, because these are positive values, we're adding a plus sign in the middle of both of those brackets. Okay, hopefully I'm not moving too fast for you guys, but like, um, as I said in lesson, this, this isn't really a replacement. I'm not trying to teach you how to do this. This is more of a revision from the quadratics topic that we did earlier in the year. Okay, now this is where it's going to get a little bit trickier because you can see these next few expressions have some minus signs. Again, the process is the same though. Set up your two sets of brackets. I need two numbers that multiply to give me a positive 6. But when added together, give me minus 5. Now, with this, because it's, they add to give us a minus value, but when we multiply them together, they're actually giving a positive value. I actually know that both of these numbers are going to be negative values. Because a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. So, with that in mind, x goes at the front, both sets of brackets. Subtraction sign in between. And what are those two numbers? Well, 6 and 1. They multiply. Negative 6 and negative 1 multiply to give me 
positive 6, but if I added them together, it would equal negative 7. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. So the values I'm looking at here are actually negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 times negative th 2 is positive 6. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. So I can fill in the rest of my brackets here. X take 2, X take 3. Okay, similar again with this uh, question down here. Again, set up your brackets. I know that uh, the two numbers multiply together to give me positive 16, but I need to add together to give me minus 8. Um, probably we worked out here that uh, this number is a square number, 16, um, and, and minus 8 is the sum of minus 4 plus minus 4, and minus 4 times minus 4 is positive 16. So we can actually simplify that even further from x take 4, x take 4 to just one set of brackets, x take 4, all squared. Okay, um, and this is actually an example of factorising perfect squares, uh, and I'll get to a few more examples like that shortly. With this final example, okay, again, a little bit trickier. This time I've got two negative values, so I need a number that multiplies together or two numbers that multiply together rather to give me negative 14. Because um, the product of two numbers is going to be a negative number, I actually know that one's going to be a positive and one's going to be a negative. So this makes it a little bit trickier. Again, set up your two sets of brackets. X can go at the front. Like I said, one's going to be a positive, one's going to be a negative, because I know when they multiply together, it's going to equal a negative number. So what are those two values? Multiply to give me negative 14, but add together to give me negative 5. Again, you could go through negative 14 times by 1, or 1 times by negative 14. If you add those values together, you're only going to get to negative 13. We're going to get to negative 5. Okay, another possibility could be negative 7 times positive 2, or positive 7 times negative 2. Um, negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. 7 plus negative 2 is positive 5. So this is my combination. A negative 7 and a positive 2. So this is where it's important uh, that you do get the numbers in the correct set of brackets. Okay. Uh, the next couple of examples I'm going to look at, you can use the same process, sum and product. So two numbers that multiply to give you the value of C and add to give you the value of B. Um, but you'll notice that these numbers are actually the same number. So when I set up my brackets, two numbers that multiply to give me 9 and add to give me 6 are actually 3 and 3. So x plus 3, x plus 3, which we simplified last time to one set of brackets, x plus 3, all squared. And that's why it's a, a perfect square. So both of those brackets uh, have the same values. Okay, so x plus 3 squared. Again, this time, two numbers that multiply to give me 25 and add to give me 10. Set up your two sets of brackets. X goes at the front. So those two numbers are 5 and 5. Simplify that even further. X plus 5, all squared. Okay, um, last example I'm going to show you guys today. Again, you might even see the pattern happening. I know that these numbers are going to be 7 because uh, there's a positive here and a negative here. I know that the both of those numbers need to be negative because they're multiplying to give me a positive but adding to give me a negative. So you might say straight away, all right, I know those numbers are negative 7 times negative 7. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Negative, x times negative 7, all squared. Okay, so basically what I want you to do from this, guys, uh, look at the textbook. should be able to now go to page 313 and look at questions four and five uh, in preparation for our work with some parabolas later this week.